Welcome back to the Hockey Shop, source for sports. We're out here in Langley amidst 30,000 square feet of- 34,000. Hockey Goodness. amazingness here in Goalie Utopia, which is the special corner of the building. Yes. Special because we have all the cool stuff. Speaking of which, speaking of cool stuff, like how popular have these been since they debuted last season, the Connect Skates, seeing it at the National Hockey League level, all over the place, have a ton of positive feedback from NHL guys. Um, really, and actually, you know, I digress here a little bit, but the biggest feedback I heard from top pros, from Andre Vasilevsky to Semyon Varlamov, um, hips don't hurt as much. The extra ankle And as Shakir flexion, once said, your hips don't lie, so you have to listen to them. You don't hear them as much when you're in the Connect Skate. And now, you can get in the Connect Skate a little cheaper, Cam. HF2. And in intermediate sizes. So, this is the Connect HF2. Bowers come up with a second price point model. And of course, the question you're gonna be asking first off is, what's the difference financially? Mm -hmm. And then what are the differences? What am I not getting for the lower price point? So let's start with that price point, because it's a question everybody's gonna have. 749.99 for a senior and 649.99 for the intermediate. Okay, so $1,000 skate? Correct. Doesn't Seven, come in intermediate. But you can't get it in an intermediate. $750 skate, and you can get it in intermediate. So Absolutely. that's a big difference. So the yes. fact that we've got more people able to access this technology and get dorsiflexion through their ankles is a big part of the HF2. Now, what do you get or don't get here that you would get here? Cam Matt would have walked me through the So Connect let's clarify HF2. like right off the bat. The HF2 is not a replacement. For the Connect skate, this it's is an creating, alternative. It's creating a second price point, so similar to Bauer's tiering structure in their skates, as we've seen previously, and also similar to what we've seen previously from Bauer skates, their intermediate model is usually up spec by quite a bit. So the differences are going to be a little bit more minute and minimal to a bit of a degree. So when we're getting a little bit more zoomed in onto the skate itself, we're going to start talking about first of all the actual shell itself. So the actual Connect skate features their grill mid shell, which is that. Crazy, thermal moldable, high impact, cold weather resistant plastic. And if you read the, review the line at ingolmag.com, you would know that Bauer went and worked with sort of ski boot manufacturers at the top end of that industry to Correct. source a material that will be hyper, their word, hyper thermal moldable. Get it? Hyper, hyper light? Kind of a thing. Okay. It's their thing. Just keep going. Okay. So, covered the actual shell. If we look down into the actual bottom buckle itself, so hold on, hold on. Grillamid, no grillamid. No, no grillamid. But still thermal moldable, just exactly. not to the same degree. So still, we still treat this the same in terms of the molding process itself for the skate. Uh, but it's again, it's like you you just you don't get that top end plastic, for example. Okay. So buckle wise, when we look at the middle buckle, like the bottom one itself, we notice that it is shaped a little bit differently. What you are going to lose is a little bit of that macro adjustability. So when you look at the Connect skate, that buckle is easily screwed in and out. Um, because it did have some inherent issues to start off at the bat, but this was an easy way to replace it and make sure that uh, you could get that swapped out quite easily. But through screwing it in and out, you got a little bit of that macro adjustability in terms of for how tight it is on the micro, top of your Micro, not macro. Micro. Adjustability. Adjustability. Just, just a correction there, Cam. Oh, a little one, eh? So we don't have that same adjustability in this buckle. No. Still get, obviously, your same normal notches, um, but not that same adjustability. But the top buckle does have the micro adjustability so the top the portion HF2. of the skate, pretty much the exact same. It's still what would be the connect. Okay, so now here's the thing. People are like, ooh, do I need the micro adjustability ooh. on the top of the foot? What if I told you that I got an NHL guy that doesn't even have a buckle on the top of this? Connor Ingram of the Arizona Coyotes. I remember being in the room this year. I'm like, whoa. I was like, hey, first of all, I'm like, hey, you're in the skates. And, because it was new, right? So we were talking to guys that had it new. I'm like, you don't have a buckle at all on this skate. Like, none. Look at that. that picture. Like, not, no buckle. You're telling me. So I was like, and he doesn't need it. Got a bit of a bigger hand. Um, or bigger hand. <laughs> he doesn't need it. Has a bit of a bigger foot. A little taller arc. So he didn't, it, it was just too tight. Couldn't there get it buckled. Go. So he removed it completely. Skate till, still performs at a really high level. Enough that he stayed in it. Despite not being able to use that buckle. So again, the need to micro adjust this one. 
it is not, it's like it's not absolutely necessary. You're seeing this at the retail level. It can as be well. person to person dependent, which is great because that creates an ability to fit more people into it. So I got another question inside his room. Did you notice that he have two sets of liners for his skate? I probably should have made note. I did not ask. Not sure he would have had it in his locker because the trainers would have had that somewhere else. So great segue into another difference. Okay, so Ultralon liner does not feature Ultralon. If you want that same liner, these are sold separately. You can run two liners inside of the boot itself. Um, say you want to switch it between periods or you have back-to-back -back ice times, things like that. That's an ability to kind of get a fresh skate in the middle of a game, which is amazing if you really think about it. Um, they're on sale as well. I believe they retail for 180. I think it is off the top of my head and we do have them in stock and yes, they're interchangeable, like I said. Um, so this is not the same level of the Ultralon liner. Where am I gonna feel the difference? Is it the moldability? Uh, it's still gonna have that same moldability because it is a thermal molded foam itself and it is gonna have that memory foam activation from that thermal molding. So you are still gonna get that same imprint, but in theory, you are getting the better liner here versus there in the HF2. And as you said, interchangeable. So if I wanna spend $180 and buy my own second liner, you can buy the high-end one to put in Correct. the slightly lower end skate. So one more final note, especially when things, when it comes to interchangeable, different steel between the two, you're gonna find their Pulse SS steel, which is their Pulse TI steel without the titanium coating. So SS is calling out the stainless steel portion of it. In the regular HF2, we're just gonna have their LS 3G plus steel, which is their still stock taller steel, which you're gonna find on the Elite Skate. Um, this price point is available uh, as a replacement um, next step up, you can look into their uh, LS 5G Plus, or we can also look into their Pulse TI Steel, all of which are interchangeable, all of which are available aftermarket. So the steel itself isn't different, it's just the stainless steel coating, or is it actually a different steel? It is a different quality of steel between the two. Again, not, not unexpected, you're paying less for this skate, you're, there's going to be portions where you're getting a little less, and in this case it's the steel, but it's, again, interchangeable, you can upgrade, a, much like a liner having multiple, we know lots of goalies that work through multiple sets of steel, you can just transition through that process. Exactly. Holder itself, Vertex Edge, Still same same. Yes, so, big key callouts here. A little bit better of a price point, available in intermediate sizes, starting at size four. You're getting more options, more people are able to move inside of this skate. Um, Overall, I think it's, a, it's, it's an excellent option. So if you're looking for you know, a higher end price point on the wall and literally looking for something to perform, you have two options. Okay, one more question for you, Ken. I'll go for it. We've seen a lot of goalies at the NHL level that want the forward flex. We've talked about the importance of Dorsey flexion. We talked about taking the, some of the impact off the knees and hips by allowing the ankle to flex. Correct. Some guys have pinned it so it doesn't have as much forward flex. I understand this has a pin or well a, a system built in where you can do that am i correct that is correct so it'll be hard to show right now but there's actually a hole in the back of the skate itself uh, what we can do is actually put in a helmet rivet um, or a helmet rivet for that you would find on a normal goalie helmet itself you pop that screw in and it limits the flex forward i think you only get about like five degrees maybe in and around that same area ish of turns of forward pitch so if it was too much you want to take some of that away, it is a quick option to be able to uh, change that out and set that up for you. One more quick question. Once you put the rivet in, how hard is it to take it out if you decide to go it's the just other a screw. way? It's just a screw. Just a screw. Okay, you said screw rivet, so I worry about rivets are being sort of a little more permanent. And the reason I ask that is because a lot of guys that we talked to in the National Hockey League level started the other way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start with a little bit of forward flex and see if I want more as opposed to taking the full flex and then backing off. So just something to keep in mind if this Absolutely. is a new skate to you. Uh, we, like I said, we've got a ton of good feedback. Um, we weren't really sure what to expect with the Connect skate. Uh, when we debuted it last year. And again, you can check out that full review at ingolmag.com. But talking to guys at the highest level where I think we traditionally see less willingness to adopt new technology, like guys are a little more sort of stuck mm -hmm. in their ways. I was really surprised at just how much they love this skate and how many guys switch and some of the reasons for it, frankly, uh, especially when it comes to sort of hip health. So uh, a lot to keep in mind there. And I think just a great thing by Bauer, bringing it down to a lower price point so more people can get into it, adding the intermediate options. If they've got any questions, you can give Cam a shout at... 604-589-8299 or 1-800-567-7790 or check us out at thehockeyshop.com. All of our social platforms, we've got some more video and stuff like that up on there. So 
Give us a shout. Have Sorry, a look. Hutch, you're gonna have to put those numbers up because he talks so fast sometimes for everyone else. It's the balloon, it comes up somewhere. Like and subscribe. Bye.